So we saw that the more ions we have, the more shielded each ion is from its counter ion, and for that matter, from its co-ion. And so the thing that's going to characterize this screening effect is something called ionic strength. And it's important to note that ionic strength is a characteristic of the solution as a whole, not of any individual compound. So the ionic strength is going to be, there's a different symbols for it, we'll just use I for ionic strength. It's going to be a summation where you add up the unitless concentration in molality for each individual ion. And you multiply that times that ion's unit charge squared. And so we'll just make a note here that M standard is equal to 1 molal. Okay, and because you often will use ionic strength for non-ionic, for, um, for non-aqueous solvents, and uh, uh, and also you want to be able to, to change the temperature. Molality is a, a more appropriate measure of concentration than concentrate than um, molarity. So we can change this a little bit for dilute aqueous solutions. For dilute aqueous solutions, we can say that the ionic strength is approximately one half the sum of the molarities of each ion divided by the standard concentration of one molar times the each ion's uh, charge squared. Okay, so you got to sum over every single ion in solution. Okay? All right. So uh, that will actually take care of this uh, screening effect. So how does this affect the, the activity coefficient of a particular ion? Well, the simplest, the simplest model for how um, so how, for how um, uh, uh, activity coefficients the simplest model for activity coefficients for electrolytes in solution is the dot de Bayhuckel limiting law, and I'll give you the general form of this first. And this is one of the few times you'll see a uh, a base ten logarithm in this class, and that's the log of an activity coefficient of an ion is equal to negative one. 0.824 times 10 to the 6th all over the dielectric constant of the solvent times the absolute temperature all to the 3 halves and that is going to be multiplied times the uh, charge squared of the ion that you're trying to get the activity coefficient for times the square root of the ionic strength. So every time you want to calculate an activity coefficient, you'll need to know the ionic strength of the solution. and You also need to know the dielectric constant. However, we're most often going to use water for our dielectric constant, I mean for our solvent, and so we can just plug in the dielectric constant for water. And, and oftentimes we're, we're close enough to 25 degrees C that we can plug in 298 here. So if we plug in 298 here and the dielectric constant of water at 298, which is around 78, we can just turn this whole thing into a constant. Okay? And we'll, we'll do that. And so let's just show that in the next slide. So let's do a quick example. Uh, let's ask what would be gamma for aluminum plus 3 in water 25 degrees C. Oops, 25. All right, wow, I can't seem to write 25. Okay, let's try that again. 25 degree C. Okay, so we'd say that log of gamma is equal to negative 0.509 because we're working at water 25 degrees C. The charge on the aluminum since that's the one we're trying to find activity coefficient for, squared times the square root of the ionic strength. Okay, so we can see that gamma is just equal to 10 to the negative 0.509. Uh, the charge in the aluminum is going to be 3, so we've got a 3 squared, 
and then we've got the square root of 0 0.001 for the ionic strength. And so the activity coefficient for the aluminum is actually going to be 0 0.71. So we can see that that even if even if the ionic strength is fairly low, we're going to get really big um, non-idealities, and that's especially true on multiply charged ions, right? Because because of this effect that that plus three charge has right here. So the bigger your charge is, the more acutely you're going to feel the non-ideal effects when you start throwing in uh, electrolytes into solution. Okay, and you can also see what happened is if you had an ionic strength of zero, which we have if you had an infinitely dilute solution and no other ions, right? So if you had um, uh, aluminum hydroxide and you had it at infinite um, dilution, the ionic strength would be equal to zero, and so this whole thing would be equal to zero, and that of course would give you an activity coefficient equal to one, which would, so the the standard state for the practical standard state, remember, is for an infinitely dilute solution.